You're zooming me. Why? That's like very official. Why not a FaceTime? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I am working in the bathroom, and uh, I just installed this vanity. Look at that, this sink and this vanity countertop. How about that business? Uh, now I'm about to do some plumbing. My specialty. Stop right now. That's going to cost us extra money. Stop right now. It looks like you've been working out. I did do. I did. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay good. So I did do a little workout, but then I came back here to do some work on the show. But look, even though we're not together, I think uh, it's important that we do the intro to our show together because it's <laughs> Tuesday. And it's time to do our YouTube episode. Okay, so so we're doing an intro. This is like. Uh you're my friend and then i realized halfway into the conversation that i was on a date you're we're doing the intro for the show right now uh we still have a show that's dropping and we were the guests on a on a podcast a travel podcast fancy that fancy that yes we got to be guests on this travel tribe with lisa andrews she puts together a great show every single week tons and tons of travel info tax tips from all of her guests it was a privilege that uh, we got to be on her show. Yes, it really was. So if you are watching the YouTube episode right now, sit back, enjoy and watch us be guests on this Travel Tribe podcast. I'm going back to work now. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey, listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of our This Travel Tribe podcast. I'm so happy that you are here joining me today. We have some guests with us today, which is always a really fun thing to have happen here on the podcast. We have Denise and James Gordon, and they are going to be sharing about a really fun adventure that they are on. They have recently become empty nesters, which I can relate to because my husband and I also became empty nesters in this past year. And But they have done something kind of unique, and so I'm excited to talk to them about it because it's all about travel. So I know you're going to love it and love hearing from them and learning from them. But before we get in and start just learning about their big adventure, um, do you two just want to take a minute and introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Denise Gordon, and I am from Los Angeles, California. Uh, originally from Chicago, but lived in Los Angeles for about 30 years in the Los Angeles, uh, San Diego area. And um, James and I uh, started an adventure about two years ago, but I'll let James introduce himself <laughs> before we get into that. All right. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm James Gordon, obviously, and uh, I am obviously also along on this adventure. Uh, I've been a television editor for about 20 years. I've worked mostly on competition and reality shows. My uh, forte is sort of, well, my my slogan, I guess, is if somebody's getting eliminated, I've probably worked on that show uh, with a few <laughs> exceptions. So uh, we raised three kids in Los Angeles. Denise had a day spa in Agora Hills up until the time we decided to depart L.A., uh, and once our last child went off to college, that was it. We packed up the van and the dog and hit the road. Okay. So we the did. dog gets we to did. come along on your adventures. She's still with us. Yes. I love that. Everyone okay. always asks about the dog. <laughs> of course. I have a dog. I love my dog. How could you leave your dog <laughs> behind? So the kids may leave, but you get to keep the dog with you. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so and then if that wasn't like enough, if that wasn't like crazy enough to just sell everything and hit the road, um, we actually decided to document our travels through a podcast. So we also podcast about what we do. Yes. And we've decided we'll share this episode. So if you're listening here on this travel tribe, you could also go check it out over on their feed, which is Skip Town All Stars. And pod, you add the word podcast if you're searching them on Instagram. Um, but we'll be sure to link it up in the show notes. So you could go check out their podcast if you want to learn even more about all the things that they're doing on their big adventure. Okay, so let's just get started talking about this. So what you two decided to do, you became empty nesters 
and decided to just make a big shift in your life. So do you want to tell us about kind of what the catalyst was for that and then what you ended up doing? Sure. Uh, so for years, we have talked about wanting to explore the country. And we knew that living in Los Angeles would be very expensive for us when we retired. We have three daughters. We raised them in Los Angeles. Um, one is an adult living in Texas, working as a television news producer, and the other two are still in college. We knew that we could, obviously we could stay in LA, we could, we could make it work, but to really make our funds go a lot farther, we would probably have to find an area that was just more affordable as we got older. And um, probably in the, like for the last 10 to 15 years, I, I always say that, you know, this is going to date us for sure. But we would see those articles on like AOL.com or Yahoo Travel. <laughs> AOL. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you just dated us with the AOL. Yeah, that's and okay. We would, and we would print those out for each other. I would say, oh, there's this great town. And I'm going to this is a true example. There's a great town that's popping up in Texas that everyone is talking about called Austin. We should probably check it out one day. Well, you know, here we are now 15 years later, and that is definitely not affordable. So that's not even an option. But the point is, is that I actually had a folder of all of these emails we would print out or travel suggestions. And we thought one day we're going to do this. We are going to check out all these places we've read about. And maybe one of those places will be our new hometown. So the conversation really probably started 10 years ago, maybe even 15. And our daughters were involved in the conversation. I mean, they knew as they were graduating that one day we would be living somewhere else. It just happened a little quicker than we had anticipated. <laughs> That's super fun. So really the draw was just moving out of LA and trying out a new city somewhere in the US. But then your yes, plans we... seem to evolve beyond that, right? So, uh, James, do you want to tell us what happened next? Well, uh, the, the, the first precursor was actually COVID and the ability for me to finally, as I had been telling my employers for years, I could do this. I could be doing this from home. And uh, COVID obviously proved it. The pandemic proved that for a lot of people in a lot of different industries, mine included. And so once I realized that I could you know, feasibly uh, continue working from home even after the pandemic was over. Uh, we did a few little trips. We went up to Seattle for a couple of weeks just to, it's very important to remember for a lot of people listening that Los Angeles was on lockdown for about a year. And so we decided to sort of bust out for a little while. We rented an Airbnb up in the Seattle area. I was able to work from home. The girls were still doing their classes from school, for their high school classes from uh, the Airbnb we rented. So that trip was really the precursor to proving that we could do this. And then once uh, once 2022 ro rolled around, uh, Denise had somebody come to her at her um, spa and she was a realtor, a client of hers that was a realtor. And she basically said, we don't know what the Fed is going to be doing, but it looks like interest rates are going to be rising. I know you guys have talked about putting your house up for sale in 2024, 2023, but you need to do it now while the iron's hot. So we did exactly that. Um, it's still a little bit of a sore subject with our youngest daughter that there was a for sale <laughs> sign in the front yard during her graduation party. But uh, when she went off to college, we legitimately, legitimately moved out of the house as a family together. And since then, uh, I did take a few months off. It was nice to relax and travel around the country, but eventually I had to go back to work. And uh, it's been incredible the last year and a half, two years, just being able to sort of set up shop in hotel rooms or Airbnbs or wherever we're staying. Uh, and just, you know, continue to do my job while trying out a new city. I love that. Now, I assume you had a house full of things, right? Um, so Ugh. what did you do with all of your stuff? We ended up selling everything. We even sold our cars. So the only things, the only items that we brought with us that we actually put in storage was um, <laughs> our kids' art supplies from K 
K through 12. I'm not even kidding when I say that. It was ridiculous. And um, <laughs> a few articles of clothing because we pretty much brought most of our clothes with us. And um, again, we sold everything. We sold, we sold our cars, our furniture, our plates, our dishes. I mean, everything that was in the house. So the only thing in storage at that point were just important papers, kids art stuff, and maybe a few articles of clothing, like big, you know, winter jackets that we were not going to be using while we're, you know, searching out these new towns. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so it, it, it was, it was a lot of work and <laughs> it oh, sounded sure. great in theory, but putting it together and having a yard sale and trying to get rid of everything was really, um, it was quite difficult, more so than we both had to anticipate We thought it was going to be simple. We're going to have a yard sale and a state sale and people will come and everything will be gone. No, no. 75% of our house was still there. And then we had to figure out we're moving in two weeks. What do we do with this? So was it really emotional for you to part with your things or was it easier than you thought it might be? For me, the, the answer is no. I looked at all of that stuff for 15 to 20 years. I couldn't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> I was so tired of looking at those couches. Yeah. I can't even tell you. Um, it just felt like a real fresh start. And that's it mm -hmm. really was. So why would I bring those things with us? It wasn't like we were moving locations for a job or moving locations for family. This was completely different. We were truly starting over. And we were going to start over in a new location in a new home. So I didn't want to bring, I just didn't want to bring any of those things with me. I, I really kind of wanted to start fresh wherever that may be, but I don't know. How did you feel? I mean, it was a little bittersweet because we had finally gotten the house to where we <laughs> loved it. Uh, the bathrooms had been redone over the years. Mm -hmm. The little guest house out by the pool was done. We loved our backyard. It was an oasis. And so to be giving those things up was a little bittersweet. But I just knew that there was a whole new trajectory for us as a couple and uh, and especially not uh, our, our children not being sort of sidled with a lot of college debt when they graduated with their bachelor's degrees. So the upside was tremendous for us. I love that. So it's kind of, I know that you're traveling a lot now as we're talking about. Yes. Are you on the search for a new home? Like, are you hoping to land in a new home base or do you think that you'll just perpetually be travelers and picking up and traveling? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the question our kids keep asking us. Are, are you going to find our home? Like, what is the story here? Mm -hmm. uh, we really do want to find a home, but there is a part of us that, no lie, we really enjoy living like a local when we go somewhere because we'll stay at a place for a month. Or, you know, minimum a couple of weeks. So uh, we stayed in Savannah for a month. We've been in Connecticut for a month. Uh, we've done other places for a couple of weeks to get a feel for what it would be like to live there because it's not a vacation. So what we do is completely different because when you're on a vacation, you know, you're going to all the tourist sites and you're, you're just taking it in as a tourist. But if we're feeling like we want to, it's the place for us to set down roots, then our experiences are much different. We are meeting people that live in those areas and chatting with them. We're um, of course doing a few things that are touristy, but, but our research is just different because we want to know, like, is there an airport nearby? Um, how is their public transportation? Is it a walkable city? Um, are the people friendly? So our hit list is much different than just being on a vacation. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Now I you would, said you I, sold your cars. How are you getting yeah. around? Did you end up buying a new car or are you just relying on public transportation to get you all over the place? Oh my gosh. I, I, we are definitely not RV nor public transportation people per se. Uh, we, we rented a van for the first several months. The, the truth is we sold our cars because we were the type of people that would buy cars and just drive them until you, they couldn't be driven anymore. And so we loved not having a car payment. It was always tremendously important for us. And we had nice cars, but they were old. And so we knew they would not be making any cross country trips <laughs> in, in any safe fashion for us. So when we unloaded them, we did rent a car for probably three or four months. Eventually we did 
decide that that was just becoming too expensive. And so we ultimately settled on a Subaru Outback that Denise was talked into for safety reasons. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we have a love-hate relationship with it, but uh -huh. it is the current <laughs> Skip Town Mobile. Okay, so it's working for you. Now, do you have a kind of a home base where you kind of settle in or maybe store some of your things um, or are you just always on the road? Well, it's funny you ask that because we purchased a home before we decided to leave Los Angeles, before we even decided that we were, it was going to be 2022 for us. We had a income property that we purchased in Florida. So um, we just thought, honestly, we were so naive about this. We're just going to be on the road and travel. Like we're just going to travel, travel, travel until we find our place, like our hometown. Well, at the time, and we still do, we have a dog and that, that poor dog, like she's, a, <laughs> she's a boxer. And so she's a bigger dog. And so we rented a minivan when we decided to start this journey and she was along for the ride, but she wasn't happy about it. Mm. And at one point we really thought to ourselves, are we going to have to just like get an apartment somewhere? So this dog can have like, um, a familiar setting. Like we were really, mm. we just, we weren't thinking. And um, after a few months in, we decided, let's go to the rental house and make that a base camp. And then we have met other people that are doing similar things to what we're doing. And everyone has agreed, you need a base camp. I mean, it's just, it's necessary. Um, and the dog needed it. So that kind of made us use the rental home in Florida as a base camp. So when our renters aren't here because it's a seasonal rental situation we have, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a long-term renter, uh, we come back to the house. So for instance, um, last year we were gone for like seven months and those other you know, months that we were, we were here, eight months maybe we were gone, and those other months we were here dipping in and out of the house because yeah. we will still travel from the house. And, okay. and we're uh, we should add that we're fortunate. Uh, we uh, Denise's brother and my sister in law live nearby, and it just turns out that she is a dog sitter. So, uh, oh, that so is very our, lucky. <laughs> it is so our older dog who went on the road with us and was not liking us too much after having you know twelve years in a wonderful backyard in L.A. Mm -hmm. and sort of routine and consistency. All of a sudden, she was also uprooted. And now it's she has that sort of stable home environment mm -hmm. again because we live so close to them. So oh, uh, we're fortunate that they're willing to take her if Denise and I are doing a quicker trip or um, or, 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 if we're, if, yeah, if we're, I guess <laughs> we were just we're, on the road for we're two. gone for a month or two. Yeah. So, yeah, we were just on the road for two months, scoping out some areas that people have mentioned you should look here. And we didn't take her for that. So I was very fortunate. My sister-in-law watched her for those two months. So yeah. the dog has actually been a, a big factor in our travels. And some of our listeners will reach out and ask us how we do it. And we've been very honest with them that we don't do it well. Like we have to have her <laughs> with a sitter. I would I would never recommend this. I mean, it's for anyone who has a, a bigger dog or an older dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. Something definitely to consider if you're thinking about doing something like this. So I would Absolutely. love to hear about some of the places you visited and maybe, you know, are there a couple that have really stood out that are kind of making a, a top five list for you? Or are there any maybe that you're like, yeah, that isn't the place for me. Well, I'll let you go first. Because our list, our list is actually different. It is. Okay, so, so you gotta wait up. until it aligns, right? And then you'll know yeah. you're onto something. I think you're right. For so sure. yeah, and we we definitely have um, criteria. So you go first. Okay, so my uh, top five, it, I personally love, so we have a daughter that attends the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I have really grown to love that town. There's a vibrancy there. There are a lot of young students there. It's not uh, just Mormon castle after Mormon castle anymore. For those of us who are not part of that religion, there's plenty to do. Mm -hmm. Lots of out outdoor activities. It's one of my favorite places to go. I love the people. I love the rustic nature. And especially it's kind of a foodie town, which is not something you see on a lot of people's radars. So um, I love Salt Lake City. We went to Santa Fe. We had always talked about going there. Uh, we had never spent any time. I had no idea how much art and 
uh, sort of community involvement that this little town could have. It's really a wonderful place. It's very special. We ultimately decided that we're not going to move there because there's not a major airport anywhere mm -hmm. close. And they sort of roll the sidewalks up after 9 p.m., which is a deterrent for our children to come visit us and want to spend time with us. Um, and then uh, Denise mentioned uh, staying in Connecticut. We really like the Guilford area. It's right near New Haven. So you can pop in and out of concerts or, you know, sort of larger events. Uh, but then at the same time in Guilford specifically, there's a beach and there are also mountains. So you can hike in the morning and go to the beach in the afternoon. It's pretty perfect. Um, and then, uh, so how many, what number am yeah, I? Three. three? Yeah, okay. three. Yeah. And so, uh, I will combine uh, the Kentucky slash Tennessee areas right now. Uh, I, we, I spent time in Knoxville working there. We just got done visiting there. But uh, we really have grown sweet on a particular place called Covington, Kentucky. It's wonderful because it's right outside the city of Cincinnati. It's right across the river. And so you get your major sporting events. I'm a big sport guy, sports mm -hmm. uh, athletics guy. And so I enjoy going to see baseball games, football games, all that. Uh, but there's still a really cool sort of artsy community there and a very welcoming environment, I would say. And then uh, last but not least, the king of them all. Uh, the only problem for us is we have to figure out whether or not we could actually afford to live where we want to live in this particular place. And that is Savannah, Georgia. We absolutely love it. 400 years of history, really cool people. Lots of food, lots of things to do. Tybee Island is nearby if you want to get your ocean fix. Uh, so for all those reasons, those are my top five. Okay, I love How it. I, do? Our, I think you did great. I don't have to live in Thank any you. of them though, so I don't know. Denise, <laughs> what do you think? And what are your top five? I don't have five? a top five. I don't okay. have a top five. And I have to tell you, Lisa, um, I just had this conversation with a listener recently and he asked me what my top five were and I said, I only have a top two. Is that bad? And he started laughing and he said, uh, no, he said, uh, I, I probably wouldn't have a top five either because uh, finding a place to call home is completely different than traveling and being on a vacation. Like this is a different type of travel and so many factors come into play. So unfortunately I only have a top two. That's um, actually, my, it makes your choice yeah, easier, yeah. right? Picking from two out of five seems better. So let's hear yours. Yeah. So, um, both of them, I mean, it's similar to James. I actually would say I have a top three, to be honest with you. But one of them just unfortunately doesn't have any inventory. So I can't pick that. Like, I could put it in my top three, but it just, there's nothing available. There's a little town in Connecticut called Guilford. And James had mentioned that. And mm -hmm. it is just the charming, the most charming town. If you ever saw an episode of a show called The Gilmore Girls, oh, yeah. then, okay, then you'll, you'll know of a place that they lived in called Stars Hollow. And this looks just like Stars Hollow. And it is just the sweetest place, but there's nothing available in our price range. So our price range is really between 400,000 and 600,000. So, and we feel like that's a really fair amount for, um, to buy a home. I know that there are multi-million dollar homes. Uh, we're just not in that price bracket, nor is it something at our age that we want to get into. So between four and six seems doable. Not in Guilford. So <laughs> okay. not, we spent an yeah. entire month there and we kept saying to ourselves, maybe it's not doable because we're here in the winter. And no, unfortunately, Lisa, we heard over and over again, everyone loves it here. Everyone wants mm -hmm. to move here. There's just no inventory. Yeah. So that was really disappointing. So I had to like, oh, that's still in my go, top three. Yeah. Yes, maybe a house yeah. will fall out of the sky. You never but know. I, I so, <laughs> I know, right? I keep thinking that. And so I have to be realistic. And the two places I know that have inventory is what James mentioned, a town called Covington, Kentucky. It is very cute. Georgian, believe it or not, style houses, even though it's in Kentucky. And I'm sure there's somebody in Kentucky that's going to say, oh, no, it's of Kentucky course. style. House. <laughs> yeah. like there's, there's probably an era that, you know, is more Kentucky uh, architecture. And I'm not saying it correctly, but the style of homes there are these beautiful brick, um, oh, like 3000 square foot. I can't say Victorians because I don't know the correct word, but that style of home. And it's mm -hmm. just quite beautiful. 
uh, a really cute art community. Uh, people are very friendly. So I like Covington. And then my other favorite is Savannah, Georgia. Okay. So Savannah is just easy to get around. It hits everything on our hit list. It really does. It's walkable. So we wouldn't have to use our car. Uh, people are extremely friendly. When uh, travelers or um, anyone talks about the South and they say how friendly everyone is, we can really attest to that. There yes. is such a difference uh, when you enter the Southern states, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama. Alabama. I mean, just so again, Georgia, it, it, Savannah was truly a gem. Uh, the only issue with Savannah is that it is expensive. James and I don't particularly want to live in a suburb. Uh, okay. We want to feel part of a city, even a, a small city, because we're not interested in a big city. We lived mm -hmm. in a big city in L.A. So we want to feel part of a downtown area. And in Savannah, it's very challenging to find a house in our price range. We could certainly move to the suburbs, but that doesn't give us the Savannah feel, if you know what I mean. Yes. So it sounds like you're aligning a bit. But I'm yeah. wondering if there are any other places you still are hoping to explore before you make your decision. Oh, yes, of course. There's <laughs> oh, First of all, there are always cities that pop up that listeners will say, come visit us. We mm -hmm. think you'll like this place. Um, but right now, I mean, we want to really, James is very much interested in, in, in seeing what Chattanooga, Tennessee has to hold for us. Yeah. And uh, we recently visited Pittsburgh. Denise decided quickly it's out for her. No, whereas it's too, it's too big city. It's okay. it is a big city. I mean, I know there are you know places outside of there and everything. I like it. I think it's a gritty town for whatever reason. Uh, it's because I grew up right across the border of Ohio in Youngstown, Ohio. So it's it's kind of like the same vibe. And for whatever reason, I was sort of into it. But um, yeah, I, I would say we spent a little time in Knoxville. I had the fortune of going to Chattanooga before Denise arrived in Tennessee. Uh, and so, uh, frankly, I thought it may be a better place for us to end up. Now, she has also been to Milwaukee on a girl's trip recently, and I have not. And she said, you know what, it's it, like... it." don't sleep on Milwaukee. We may want to go there. But, you know, again, we, we're talking to a couple of people from who have lived in Southern California for almost three decades. So our blood is really thin and moving up to sort of a winter climate, even if it's only six or eight months out of the year. With our income property in Florida, it would be sort of like we're getting high on our own supply or we're eating our own profits. If we're if we need to be here in Florida while the snowbirds that we that we rent the house right. out to also need to be here. So it's kind of, we're still navigating the Northern States a bit, yeah. but there are a lot a, of good towns. I'm that, a Phoenician, Phoenix girl. So same as LA. So honest, I, I yeah. understand like the idea of moving to Milwaukee or anywhere cold really is a little frightening. I'm sure doable. And that is, yeah, yeah, you know, and that is one of the, um, one of the parameters that we actually put on our list was no cold weather. We, we actually had that as one of the deal breakers for us, no cold weather. But then we stumbled upon Guilford, Connecticut in the fall. It was so beautiful. Everyone kept telling me their winters were mild. And I just felt like I had to be the judge of that because yeah. somebody else is mild. It is another person's blizzard. Right. So, um, so we went back in the month of February and spent 30 days in Guilford, Connecticut. And it, we, there was two snowstorms. So their mild is definitely not our mild, but the temperature never went below. I know. Okay. This is going to sound crazy. 20. Lisa. I know this is going to sound crazy, yeah. but it never went below 20, which actually we were fine with because I'm used to Arctic winters living in Chicago for so many years and him growing up in Ohio, he was also used to negative below zero. So being in double digits, we were like, this is actually doable. Yeah. And, Not too and, bad. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if it's only for a couple of weeks, we can handle it. Or if it's um, for a month or two, if it truly is mild in terms of how long it lasts or what have you, then it was kind of nice in a way. And frankly, we were just recently in Greenville, South Carolina, and it was 16 degrees there. So we weren't expecting that. We weren't dressed for it, certainly. 
And so, you know, at any given point in any given town nowadays, it seems like the weather could turn on a dime. So, oh, yeah, you can get cold weather. And then even in Phoenix, it gets very cold here. That is true. I think yeah. in the winter true. anyway. It's not in the 20s. Well, sometimes it is in the 20s. So, you know, wherever you go, you're going to have to yeah. have some cold weather. But a little variety is always nice, too. So I'm wondering if you have any lessons that you've learned, you know, things about maybe even traveling with your spouse and being with your spouse all the time or some logistical <laughs> things about well, this feels like I a mean, setup I just, Lisa no, I gotta be honest I don't know are just lessons like how have you really made it work for you like what advice would you have for someone you know another couple who's you go thinking, first. this sounds really fun you know setting out but I think having some clear expectations about what things are going to be like or just things that you've set up that help make it just good for both of you. So definitely not a setup. I just am curious, like, do you have any <laughs> tips or tricks or things that have worked well for you? Absolutely. We get, I, I personally get asked this question quite a bit. I'll have listeners send me a message in my DM and they'll actually come out and say, how have you not murdered James in your <laughs> travels? And um, we, we set some rules from the very beginning. Uh, the number one rule was Okay, first of all, I just want to say if anybody wants to do something like this with their husband or the husband's listening and want to do it with their spouse, you have to at least try it first by doing a long weekend away because the music he's going to listen to in the car is not the music you're going to listen to in the car. Um, the podcast you want to listen to may not be the podcast he, wanna, he wants to listen to. And you actually have to see what the conversations are like. So I've told so many people, don't put the for sale sign up on your house just yet and jump in the car with, you know, your loved one. Do a long weekend away first and see how you get along and in the car ride and make it a car ride that's more than three hours because that's where the boredom starts to set in, <laughs> like around hour three. Um, one of the first rules we did when we started this adventure is we, we both decided we would not drive more than six hours on any given day. Mm. And we pretty much have stuck to that rule. Uh, we do break also for lunch. So we will not break at like a fast food restaurant. We actually will look on a map and try to find a local restaurant in an area because it will give us an, a feel for the people. We get out of the car. It makes us walk in a downtown area. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that we've actually stayed true to. Of course, there are exceptions. If we want to get to a city before midnight and we have to, you know, drive longer, or we don't want to spend the night somewhere and just be on the road for two hours. So we may, there's exceptions. If you know what I mean, like we're not going to stay at a hotel and then just yeah. get up and drive for two hours. So we'll just add that to the evening before. But there have been times where I've mapped out destinations and he has said, Ooh, that's a seven and a half hour drive. So we're really going to stick to six. And he kept me like on that schedule better. And um, that I think has made all the difference because for some people, a road trip could sound like a nightmare and we didn't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So James, how about you? Any advice? I, I would say my biggest piece of advice is that, you know, when we first started out, I was the one working primarily. And what we did not expect in trying to launch a podcast and then keep that podcast going for our listeners every week was that Denise would also ultimately be working just as much as I am. Uh, she is a full-time producer on Skip Town All-Stars. And while she's doing that, I'm still doing television jobs and helping out, you know, obviously doing the production side of the podcast. Um, I would say uh, you know, you need to be guarded a little bit and be a little more patient with your partners. We've never worked in an office together. And so you have to be a little more patient with your partner's sort of workflow. And like she will hit her peak sort of productivity starting at 8 p.m. at night and go until one or two in the morning. I don't do that. I'm an early riser. I'm usually up by 6 a.m. So there's a lot of ebb and flow in our daily calendar that we've learned to sort of tiptoe around, uh, especially when we're the one who is up and the other one is not. And so uh, that's required a little bit of, of uh, you know patience in that regard. But I would say just generally in the travel aspect of things, um, I would definitely say qualify every Airbnb and or hotel that you are going to book 
uh, with your partner before you book it. We had a really sort of crazy experience in Roswell, New Mexico. Our Airbnb was spookier than any alien or paranormal activity that you could find there. Uh, we we determined rather quickly that we were sort of staying in some sort of cult members Airbnb. So so we've had adventures like that along the way. And it's all because, you know, she's driving and I'm just on booking.com or Airbnb or what have you. And I'll, I'll hit click and commit to something without running it by her thinking, oh, it's going to be fine. It's just going to it's going to be just like the last Holiday Inn Express <laughs> that we were in in Perry, Georgia. But no, this one's in Pittsburgh and it's junk, you know. So uh, so I would say those things and um, uh, are very important with your partner. And the other thing, just a, a learning thing that I would add is I have learned that I'm very impressionable. And when uh, there are at least 30 or 40 towns in America that I personally could live in where Denise has just completely <laughs> nixed them. And it'll take me a day or two. And Denise says, you know, if somebody on the sidewalk sees me and is nice to me, then all of a sudden I'm all in on XYZ Massachusetts or wherever it is, you know. So I've learned that about myself. I I'm definitely more adaptable, maybe even gullible uh, when it comes to uh, being in a new town. But that's fun. I mean, you're trusting, yeah. right? And maybe you can always find something good about living in any place. I do believe that, True. right? It might not be Absolutely. the best fit, but there are always going to be some positives about everywhere. Yeah. So, sure. okay. Is there any last thing that you want to share that you think would be important for our listeners to know before I ask you some final three questions that I like to ask every guest. Okay. Uh, if you have the desire to travel and you also, you know, coupled with our desire to find a new hometown, it seems really daunting, but it's, it's actually not. If you have, I, I want to say a partner, but we know, we know people who are actually doing it solo. So if you just, if you have a partner that's willing to do it with you and they take on a share of the responsibility and the traveling, oh, you should do it. I mean, honestly, and if you have the opportunity where you can work from anywhere, try it. One of the things that we learned, I think both on this journey of ours uh, in looking for a new hometown is that there were certain loves that we had for a city before we got there. And then realize that love affair ended the minute we got there because mm -hmm. it wasn't at all what we expected. And then there are other places we never even heard of, like this little town in Texas called Bernie, that we absolutely fell in love with and yeah. had never heard of it. So uh, the experiences, the travel experiences, I mean, obviously we're looking for a new place to call home, but just the travel experiences, we'll have that a lifetime. The houses mm -hmm. come and go. I, I mean, whatever house we find, we may end up selling in five or six years. Who knows where our children are going to be? Right. But the travel experiences we'll have forever. And that is something that no one can take away from us. And I just, I'm such a huge proponent of it. I, I really am. Mm -hmm. You're out making memories together that couldn't be made any other way. That is All so right. true. So what is your favorite place that you have ever visited? James, do you want to go first? Ever out of anything, Ever. vacations, yes. Skip Town, All Stars, Adventures, anything. anything. Yes. Okay. Uh, I so I would say this is a tough one, uh, but I would say anything that sort of knocks me out of the box in terms of culture uh, have been the most rewarding experiences, travel experiences that I've had in my life. So. Pick one. We, we, I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm winding up. I'm She's getting there. Up. I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. um, so we visited a lot of little towns in America that I never thought that I would ever visit or see or didn't even know existed. So that's all been great. And those are small little tastes of different American culture. But I could say, uh, you know, moving past Mexico City or uh, Montreal, which are distinctly different flavors. Um, my favorite place that I've ever been has been Luxor, Egypt. And the reason for that is uh, I, A, being an American, I never really studied up on the fact that it's a major agricultural center, even for parts of Europe. And so I did not know that along the Nile River, you would a find so many friendly people, but also the fruit smoothies are everywhere and it's legitimate fruit that's grown in Egypt. I would have never known this. And so 
you know, something as like my, the younger me would be would say you're being corny with the history component and the cultural components and all that other stuff. But I'm a little older now and I like to think I've evolved. And I got to tell you, taking a balloon ride at 4 a.m., uh, you know, taking a, a a boat across the Nile River to take a balloon ride and see the Valley of the Kings and everything as the sun rises, one of the most magnificent experiences I've ever had in my life. So that's my answer. Okay. That's Luxor's my long winner. answer. I love Luxor it. Luxor Egypt. <laughs> okay. That was a really long I didn't leave Denise way. anytime, so wrap it up quickly, honey. It's all good. All right. So Denise, how about you? Well, I haven't traveled as very, I, I mean, we've traveled overseas, but I haven't done a ton of overseas travel. Uh, I'm going to have to say, I know this is corny as heck, but if you only have one chance in your life to ever get out of your country and see something from me, it was Paris. Because I read about it. I, I, I've i seen movies about it. But to actually have boots on the ground and walk that city was phenomenal. And I've been to like I've been to Dubai. I've been to Belgium. And, and those were fantastic. But if, if there's just one place ever in your life that you can go to, and I was fortunate to go to Paris, I would say that was the most memorable because it's Paris. It's, it's Paris. Paris. I yes. agree. I love Paris like so much. So I'm right there yeah. with you. All right. So do you have a favorite item that you always pack with you when you travel? And this for you might be like all your things, but do you have one thing that you just wouldn't want to leave home without? Okay. That is so hard because for me, the very first thing I comes to the top of my head is my lint roller. And I know okay. that is not your typical travel item, but it, it <laughs> runs funny. neck and neck with my hotel socks. So oh, yeah. my hotel socks don't leave the, like they come with me everywhere. Um, I won't walk on a hotel floor without That's my socks wise. and they're, they're specific. They look a certain color. So everyone knows that if you see those socks, don't touch them, don't put them on because they've hit the floor of the <laughs> hotel. And I have like four or five of them, depending on how long our trip is. So my hotel socks are key. Okay. That's a great one. I've never heard that one before. Okay. And James, how about you? That's a, uh, the family does tease her quite a bit about her hotel socks. Uh, hey, uh, for me, it's really down. simple. Yeah. For me, it's really simple. Uh, my, no my noise canceling headphones. Uh, I have a pair of Bose QC45s. There are new, newer models out. I've had mine for a number of years. I cannot fly without them. Uh, it's, I, I find that when I'm in an airport or on a flight, it's my one chance to listen to music that I want to listen to, that Denise does not want to listen to. Uh, so I can do heavy metal for five hours on a plane. I don't have to hear babies or coughing or all that. But in addition to that, um, you know, it really has been useful now that we are podcasting. Uh, I get to see what other podcasters like yourself are doing. And so it has allowed, it has afforded me uh, the ability to, uh, you know, know what the best, how to get the best deals on Southwest Airlines, which I've never, you know, I've never <laughs> delved into that stuff before. Uh, all of your many, many experts that you have on your show, I'm grateful for because now I get to consume them. And so without a doubt, my, my noise canceling headphones. Love that. Okay. So one last question. Uh, where is one place you still have on your travel bucket list? You can only pick one. So, Ooh. um, yeah, I know oh, it's I know hard. Denise, is. you want to go first? Oh yeah. I know what mine is. Cause I've wanted to go here for years and it just hasn't happened. Italy. I want to mm. go to Italy. That's where I want to go. So I that it. It, that's on my bucket list. Well, I hope that yeah, happens yeah. for you soon. Oh, All right. I hope so too. Yes. All right, James, how about uh, you? I don't know. I've heard great things about Prague. So mm -hmm. I would say somewhere in the Eastern Bloc countries, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've just heard such fantastic things uh, about visiting that city yeah. over the years. And so I, I would say that would be a highlight for me. Okay. Well, I hope you both get to those amazing places. This has been Thank so much you. fun talking with it you has. and learning about your adventure. And I hope that you're able to eventually find a great place to settle in. But really, in the meantime, I think you're having a great time. So there's really no hurry. Thank you. I, I agree with you. We are having a, we are having a really good time. Uh, 
I do hope, though, that we find something soon. <laughs> we seem to be zeroing in. We okay. seem to be zeroing in. But we're very grateful that you had us today. We're grateful for all the people you have on, anybody past and present and future who's going to be on your show. Really, I mean, such great value you're providing to your listeners. Thank you again. for. Oh, having sure. Me. Thank you. And just a reminder to our listeners, if you want to go over and check out Denise and James, uh, podcast. You can find it at Skip Town All Stars Podcast on Instagram. Um, or do you have a website they can also check out? Oh, we have everything. So we have, um, yes, we have an Instagram, Skip Town All Stars Travel Podcast. We have a website, Skip Town All Stars tra- com. Dot com. Yep. We have a YouTube. Uh, okay. And we're on Facebook as well, which is funny enough. We kind of get a lot of people on Facebook. It's so interesting. Um, you never know what platform is going to hit. But mm-hmm. uh, YouTube and Facebook, you know, yeah, and, and of course, we, we, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. We have, and we have pretty pictures on Instagram. I love it. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming. And I appreciate your time and that you were able to share so much great information with us. So if you have a great day. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, you too. so much. Thanks for having us. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.